Well guys, we are now off the boat and headed off to a new location, but while that trip on the boat may be over, the danger and tension on that boat is far from over. Hey guys, Kevin Murphy, Fear the Walking Dead, Season 2, Episode 6, Sea Cut Service, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode, especially because it seemed like from last week that we were going to be off the boat and head to Mexico, and that's exactly what happened in this episode. Now, I do think there was some really great stuff in this episode, probably some of the best stuff we've had this season, some really good conflict, but there are a lot of plot holes in this episode that they just didn't explain as well as they could. But I definitely will say that those episodes on the boat, that kind of meandering pace, sort of like just safety, that clearly is over in this episode. Like that safety, I'm pretty sure the characters know that that safety net that they've had on that boat is no longer um, there in this world. But let's just get into this episode because there's a lot to talk about. The beginning of this episode I thought was okay. We see children are singing in church with lights flooding in. A priest li listens anxiously as do others from their seats. The father stands up and addresses everyone in Spanish. He tells everyone that they're being tested and assures them that everyone going on is not from their god. And it's clear that he's talking about who is infected and who's not. And everyone rushes outside with weapons. And right away you can tell that obviously this... You know, Mexico is a lot more infested with walkers and a lot more, you know, they, they are, know a lot more what's going on than anyone else. And we see Thomas Abigail rushes to the church, tells the priest he's wrong. One woman starts bleeding from her eyes, followed by the rest. The father's bleeding as well, tells Abigail that this was Cynthia's doing. Now, we don't know who Cynthia is, but that is how we start. I thought that was a very way to start the episode because it shows right away, like I said, that safety net on the boats and sort of that security and just everything that they had is now over and... Right away, we can already tell that Mexico is not nearly as safe as they think it is. So, Chris and Travis sit aboard the Abigail to discuss the fact that Chris shot Reed, and that's a big part of this episode. A big part of this episode is Chris's inner violence and how he's now more willing to kill. And Chris is upset to learn that Madison didn't trust him despite saying that she did. She clearly does not trust him, and it's a very interesting scene, and I can totally understand why Travis um, isn't okay with him shooting Reed and everything, but let's face it, Reed was, you know, rogue. He was crazy, he would have killed them all, and they need to understand that, and I do like that Chris is doing that, but again, Chris is not the smartest guy, and he doesn't understand things as well as some of the other characters do, and I think they show that really well here, but it also shows that Chris is getting a bit fed up, and that rage kind of breaks him a bit in this episode, but we'll get into that. We see Madison, Luis, and Strand. They discuss their plan to get to Baja. One more stop, and Luis heads out on his own. A small boat approaches, and Strand calls Luis back and seems very frantic. He tells Madison to get everyone below deck immediately, and we don't know what this small boat is, but she rounds up everyone up to high below deck, and below deck, everyone li is listening because they don't know exactly what's going on, but obviously this is a very dangerous situation because the way that it just scares Strand, Madison knows that there's clearly something wrong, and... Daniel sits at the door with a gun, translates for everybody. They're discussing money, and the boat strand tries to dodge, but the man wants to inspect the boat since it is too big for two people, and Daniel gets ready to fight just as gunshots ring out, and the engine picks up and the ship is moving. Everyone rushes upstairs to find the dead Louise and others approaching the boat, and I'm assuming that Alex died among the chaos because we don't hear about Alex after that, but that really was one of my biggest plot holes. Look, not that I haven't liked Alex, not that I haven't really cared about Alex as a character, because you guys know I haven't. I don't give two shits about Alex, really. She just hasn't really been working for me. I haven't found her that interesting. But, come on, like, you should have at least explained why, uh, what happened to Alex. Because she's listed as a main character. She's barely been a main character. She's barely been a character, even. She's just been someone else on the boat that they didn't know if they could trust or not. And... Now she's just gone. Maybe it was just she wasn't working. I don't really know, but I at least want an explanation. They didn't really say that. Daniel goes outside on his own, stabs a dead man before approaching Luis, and Luis pleads them not to kill him. Ophelia rushes out, as does Nick, and then convince him not to kill Luis because they just don't want to kill him for whatever reason. Even though it was a walker, they should kill him, and... They find a token in his pocket, and Luis asks Daniel to give it to his mother before Daniel toasts it into, tosses it into the ocean, because he clearly doesn't want anything to do with Luis, and he's not going to listen to Luis, not going to take orders from Luis, because he doesn't trust Luis, and... Basically, Maz and Travis watch the ship approach the land, and you can already tell the things are really crazy. They are now no longer on land and everything. They now are no longer on the boat. The boat's not safe anymore. We need to move to Mexico, and that is how we started off. 
So now the rest of this episode is pretty much them on land. We see they're on land. The group is walking uphill. They come across a pile of dead bodies with a dog eating them. And Chris looks at them curiously. Uh, kind of because I guess he's interested in what the dead bodies are. But Strand finds Abigail's truck and rushes to him. But he can't find it because obviously one of the main reasons he's there is for Tom Abigail. Because he hasn't seen Thomas in a while and he wants to see him again. So he searches the church too. And a horde of walkers approaches the, the group. And Chris tosses everyone some weapons. Nick uses an axe for the first blow. Chris digs in as well, following by Strand, Ophelia, and Daniel. Nick has to put down a little girl, which I thought was interesting because The Walking Dead started, of course, with Rick having to kill a little girl, and Nick has to do the same thing. It doesn't have nearly the impact that it did in The Walking Dead, but I think it is still a very good scene here. Daniel, a priest, then a little boy, which you can tell that Daniel is perfectly fine with killing him. You know this from the beginning, but as he holds the, as the walker boy back, he has flashbacks to his time in the uh, Ecuadorian Civil War, which I thought was a very interesting scene that we saw that. We remember, of course, what Daniel had to go through then. We also know why he's so okay with killing, and Ophelia puts the walker down. Madison's tackled by a walker. Chris just looks on and is basically just letting Madison die, even though this could end up being his stepmom. He's just going to let her die, which is crazy, and mainly because of the fact that she doesn't trust him, so I guess he doesn't trust her. Alicia has to rush to her aid. Abigail calls for everybody to leave, and they do with the exception of Nick, who is sitting back upset about the little girl he had to kill. Obviously because he didn't want to have to kill, but my thing that doesn't make sense is that Nick seemed okay with killing, and now all of a sudden he's not. It just seems like with Nick, like, one second he's okay, then he's not, and they really need to figure out more of, you know, is he okay with killing, is he not okay, because I can't really figure out if he's okay or not. Maybe Nick is just confused, but I don't really know, because it seemed like com last week that Nick was completely okay with killing, and he was understanding how to be a walker, and now it seems like this is a step back, so that little things like that, like I said, a lot of plot holes in this episode. The group then heads off in a truck, and they see Thomas Abigail's home from the distance, the gate opens, and they are allowed inside, and they are welcomed and strange jumps straight to asking about Thomas, but also has to inform form her that Luis is gone, and the rest of the group gives up their weapons in exchange for a tour of the house, and Daniel's reluctant, insisting that there is always a need for weapons, that they're always going to need them, but unfortunately they can't use them here. So the woman tells him that he can keep it, but only outside of the house. He hands over a gun after Ophelia's urge to do so, because Ophelia's basically telling him, look, you know, if you want to be safe, you gotta hand it over. But I definitely think they're gonna regret not having those weapons, because of what ends up happening um, in this house, and Let's talk about this woman for a second, because I thought this woman was a good character. She's not bad by any means, but just in my opinion, she wasn't that interesting. I didn't think she was that, you know, compelling. She was very much just like a Herschel kind of character. And I think that was the point that they just wanted her to be like a Herschel character, which her name is Celia. I didn't think Celia was a bad character by any means. I just didn't find her that interesting, I have to say. I think they could have made her more interesting, and it just seemed like they were trying to make her like a Herschel. But... Basically, inside we see Strand finds Thomas laid up by a door with his arm bandage. It's covering a bite, and the worst possible thing that could happen happened here. Thomas was bit, and I think this is a good conflict to have Thomas bit, especially the person that Strand cares most about. And basically, the reason why Strand named his ship the Abigail and everything he's done, you really do see that personal pain that Strand is going through. He's teary eyed as he finds him. He apologizes. Abigail says it's okay. He waited for him, says before asking for a moment alone. Strand is very emotional. He offers to help Thomas in the bed. He's very weak. They embrace each other before heading toward it, and it's a really hard scene, definitely. I will say I do think this conflict was very rushed because when it's happening at the end of this episode, I think they could have stretched it out to two episodes, but unfortunately they didn't. Alicia watches some black and white television as Chris approaches, and we get some really great stuff between Alicia and Chris. They, by far, I think, have some of the best chemistry on the show. They work very well together, and this episode reiterates that. We see Chris approaches, he asks if she is mad at him, and she tells him that she saw what he did, and he plays dumb, and she's mad that he was just watching her mom get killed, and, you know, she wants to know, why would you just let my mom get killed like that? And he tells her that he wouldn't do that, and that she can't tell anyone. She tries to leave, but he grabs her, he tells her he doesn't, you know, that, he, and he says, I don't want you to hurt anyone, walks away, and it's a really interesting scene when he says, I don't want you to hurt anyone. Clearly, he doesn't trust Madison, he's okay with killing, and him saying, I don't want you to hurt anyone, I don't know why Chris said that, because it seems like he's okay with killing, so why is he not okay with her killing, I don't really understand. 
But Nick finds Thomas's Celia in the kitchen. She offers to feed him if he'll keep it a secret from everyone who's waiting for dinner. She hands him a bowl and he compliments it. Nick tells her that Luis was asking for her as he died. She asks him why his smile is so heavy and he tells her that he's sick of it. She tells him that none of this is new and that the dead have always walked among them. Madison cuts in and says it's a pretty big difference. He heads up to a shower and Madison dismisses Celia's claim of Nick being special by saying he is impressionable and she thanks Celia for Cecilia for the hospitality and leaves and Cecilia is her name, not Celia. Cecilia, and um, it's an interesting scene because you don't really know if Madison trusts Cecilia. You know, Cecilia might be being a bit too forward. I can totally understand why Madison doesn't really trust her because of the fact that I think Madison's with this attitude that she can really trust no one at this point. No one can really be trusted. Uh, this is a world where she doesn't really know who she can trust, and I feel like Cecilia, she definitely doesn't trust. So is Cecilia, can we really trust her, or is she just being too nice? I'm not really sure. Uh, Daniel looks at some photos and carving as Cecilia approaches him. She places a photo of Luis on the wall, and Daniel apologized for her loss. She said there's nothing to be sorry for, yet Daniel's the one that killed him, so I don't know why he's hiding this from her. I don't know... I mean, clearly he sees she has an attachment to Luis, so he's hiding this from her, but that is definitely going to come out next week, is the fact that Daniel was the one that killed Luis, because it was Daniel that did that, he pretty much was the one, he didn't, no one, you know, he didn't, no one stopped him from killing Luis, he was the one that did that, and yet Daniel isn't telling her, it just seemed a bit out of character, because to me, Daniel doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would just hide the fact that he killed someone, he seems like he would very well admit that he did that, and she says that there's really nothing to be sorry for, but of course, you know, deep down, I think he knows that he did kill him, and I understand that obviously Cecilia has emotional attachment, but that secret is definitely going to come out very soon. So Madison brings Stray and Thomas some food, they're laying in bed together, Thomas apologizes for being a bad host, but their circumstances are poor, and here's my one big thing with Madison. Madison is starting to understand the apocalypse, she's starting to understand what walkers are, she should know that when you're bit, you're going to turn to a walker. So why at no point in this episode is she not deadly afraid that Thomas is going to turn into a walker I don't understand it, it feels very out of place it feels very like just out of character for Madison I did not understand that at all and Thomas apologized for being a bad host but the circumstances are poor Thomas asked her to promise him something to look after Strand when he's gone and she does agree to look after Strand um but it's just very interesting because I don't really understand why Madison never thinks oh maybe we should just you know maybe you should put down Thomas because he's going to turn into a walker they never have have that conversation. It just feels very odd. I can't believe they never actually had that conversation there. So Ophelia goes looking for Daniel, finds him sitting by himself, by the finds him sitting by himself, claiming not to be hungry, and he's reflecting on Griselda. And I do like this scene because he's never really had that time to reflect on Griselda. He is optimistic about Ophelia's hunger, meaning that the infection is gone. He instructs her to tell the others he is just too tired for dinner, and it's clear two things. One, he's very upset about Griselda, that she's not by his side, and that he's all alone, and two, the fact that he killed Luis, and already he's feeling like an outsider. And I think I think it's very interesting. I think out of all the characters, Daniel's the one that already is feeling very out of place. And Alicia's them watching TV. Madison approaches. They talk for more before it turns to Alicia revealing a fear of Madison never coming back growing up. And it's actually a very sad scene we see. She reveals what happened with Chris, and Madison storms up to Travis to confront him about it. And she's worried that Madison is never going to come back, you know, basically. And she reveals what happened with Chris, and Madison goes right up to Travis, and we have this very, I think, actually really good scene between Madison and Travis. Now, I will admit that there is a lot of drama that is unnecessary, but I thought this scene was really good. We see she tells him about Chris watching her get attacked by the zombies, and Travis wants to help him and compares it to Nick's former situation with him in the drama. Drugs, and yeah, I do agree with Travis that Chris wanting to kill is very similar to Nick and the drugs and the fact that she never really tried to stop him. He didn't try to stop him here and a fight ensues between the two of them. They're going to sleep with their kids tonight and you can really see how much this is really affecting Travis and Madison. I mean, they've never really dealt with something like this before and it honestly is really affecting their mar their, you know, um, their relationship, which I think is very interesting. And I think any, you know, suspicion of these two getting engaged or anything isn't going to happen after this episode because it really seems like they're starting to get divided and they're starting to not really be on each other's side which I think is interesting so Strand continues sitting and comforting Thomas as the infection claims him Strand tells him to go to sleep saying that this world was never good enough for him Thomas cries he doesn't want to leave Strand Strand offers to go with him Thomas doesn't want him to let him but turns to allowing it um you know basically Strand thinks that he should just get himself that he should just go with him but Thomas basically just allows him and Daniel then sees the little boy dropping a puppy down a chute it cries out upon landing and 
Again, I feel like Daniel is just thinking about, you know, how out of place he is and things like that. Ophelia and Nickton watch through a vineyard. She's been leading him to a memorial for the dead and says she has to talk to her mother. And Nick hesitantly joins her. You can tell that obviously Ophelia, she's still feeling that void without Griselda. She asked when the last time he was inside of a church, but he says he can't remember. And we, of course, he does remember because the first I've ever seen of Fear the Walking Dead, remember that is how he discovered walkers, was inside that church when he had sex with that girl. She turned into a walker. Remember how how that all turned out. So it's clear that Nick doesn't want to remember that. She starts talking to her mother and says that her father has lost his way without her, and I do think that's partially true, but it's also the fact that Daniel killed Luis, and Nick zooms, zones out when he sees an owl carved into the tree above. He reflects on waking up and finding Gloria getting hit by a car, and again, he's remembering why he doesn't want to be in a church. Ophelia finishes up a prayer, thanks Nick for accompanying her, and I do like the bonding between these two. I think it's really good, but obviously this really scares Nick. He doesn't want to be inside a church. It's clear Clear that this is something that is just not safe for him right now. Daniel then sneaks around the property, finds a young boy talking to someone, and asks who he is talking to. The kid says that it's his mother, and Daniel asks to meet her, and sees a pack of walkers being held back by a gate. We don't know why they're there, but Daniel heads to the kitchen where he finds Cecilia. He questions her about who is responsible, and she tells him that those people are family, and this is a way to keep them safe, and... She insists, and Cecilia's been killing people with poison, we find out, and she believes that Daniel's the one who truly killed them, though, and questions why he's so afraid of death, and we know that's not the case, that Daniel's clearly not afraid of death, but it's clear Cecilia can't be trusted. Strand watches Cecilia take care of Thomas and sings to him. She approaches Strand and tells him that she never thought he was good enough for her, for him, and she tells him that she was wrong, his decision is brave and beautiful. She tells him it won't take long before leaving off with Sleep My Boy in Spanish, and Nick finds Cecilia in a courtyard drinking wine. He asks her if the walkers are really dead and she says they're not he questions what they are she says they are what comes next and if Nick really is going to believe Cecilia over someone like Daniel, I think it's really dumb. It seemed like Nick and Daniel had this nice dynamic, and Strand then sits with Thomas, who is still fading. His breathing stops, his eyes go cold. Strand holds him, kisses him goodbye. His attention turns to the poison, but walks out of the room without it, because he doesn't just want to poison himself. I mean, Strand is thinking of killing himself here, but he doesn't want to do that, and, you know, you really think it's going to be like a Romeo and Juliet situation, but Strand just doesn't want to have to do that. He doesn't want to kill himself. You know, he wants to walk out of the room and still survive, and Travis leaves asleep as Chris wakes up and sneaks out. Strand goes through the dresser drawers. Chris enters Alicia and Madison's room. He whispers for Alicia, but she doesn't answer. He picks up a knife. There's a gunshot waiting the two of them. We don't know who it is, and he picks up this knife, and there's this gunshot, and we find out that Strand has shot Thomas through a pillow. He sits on the bed, drops the gun, and... I'm guessing the mid-season finale is going to be him dealing with the aftermath, but that is how the episode ends, and overall, I did think there were some really good things about this episode. I think we have a really interesting character in Cecilia. I don't really trust her. I mean, clearly, there's more going on with her than we think. Definitely, there's something going on that we don't know. Nick seems like he believes her. It's clear that Daniel doesn't, which is very interesting. The episode very much focused on Daniel. It was very focused on him. Chris as well, very much focused on. Chris is going to get himself killed. I mean, if he really is going to try to kill Alicia or Madison, I'm thinking that he was, that's what he was going to do. He was going to kill one of them because he doesn't trust them anymore, which is crazy, but I really think that's true that Chris does not trust Alicia or Madison. He feels the only way out of this is to kill them, which is a crazy situation, but I feel like that's what he was thinking. That's what he was planning on doing. I think that's going to be very interesting as well. Um, as far as Nick, it's clear that Nick has never been in a church since the whole situation with Gloria, and this clearly scares him because of what happened with Gloria, so I see how that's going. I like seeing the bonding between him and Ophelia. I hope that continues because I do like the bonding overall. Um, as far as Travis and Madison go, you can tell this one situation with Chris is really affecting these two, the point where, to the point where they can't even sleep in the same bed together. I don't think this is going to be a permanent thing, but I do think it's going to get worse, and I do think it's going to be something that these two need to deal with, and they need to realize that the reality of the situation, that Chris is killing, and that someone needs to stop him. I don't know if they're going to stop him, but we'll have to see what happens with that. My main problem with this episode is that I have absolutely no idea what is going to happen in next week's episode. I have no idea. I don't really think this episode gave us a clear direction. I think Strand killing Thomas should have been one of the plots of next week's episode. They should have dealt with that in next week's episode. I think they should have just, for me personally, I think they should have stretched it out. It would have made more sense. It just felt very rushed here. And yes, of course, we did get that great backstory with Strand and Thomas, but I just kind of wanted more because now I don't even know what Strand's going to do. If it's just going to be him reflecting over killing Thomas, is he going to end up killing himself? I don't really know because Strand was thing of killing himself. I mean, that could end up how things go, but I'd hate for that to happen because Strand's one of my favorite characters on this show, and he's one of the best parts of the show without a doubt, and he's probably one thing that's made the show so much more interesting in season two. Um, 
as far as Daniel goes, Daniel, I think, is definitely going to confess to Cecilia that he killed, um, you know, that he was the one that killed Luis. She's got to find that out eventually. I think that definitely is going to come into play. Like I said, I definitely don't trust, um, you know, I, I definitely don't trust Cecilia. Just something about her feels very off. I don't know what it is yet, but just something about her I don't trust, and I don't really know what it is. But over, guys, so much you guys saw this episode. I thought this was a very good transition from the boat to, um, you know, to Mexico, where clearly things are less safe, maybe even, you know, maybe even less safe than it was on the boat. The boat already seemed like a very tense situation. Things seem even worse here because there's more killing, there's more fear of walkers, there's more get people turning into walkers, and I definitely think they understand the situation more. Like I said, there are some plot holes, like, was Alex one of the ones that died? I don't necessarily care, I just want them to kind of acknowledge, it. did she die, did she not? That's something that's gonna annoy me, especially because she's billed as a main character, and you're not a main character if you're there for, like, two episodes. But overall, guys, so much, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, and we'll see you guys in my next show, which will be for Penny Dreadful, which I cannot wait for, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.